Welcome back to Real Repairs for Real Customers. Today we're going to take a look at some headlight restoration. Now this is not going to be a video about the right or wrong way to repair headlights because everyone has their own idea. If you want to spend a couple of hours at home on your driveway restoring your headlights by sanding and buffing then that's, that's fine. Uh, if you want to just buff them that's fine. If you want to buff them and spray them that's fine. If you want to wipe some solvent on them that's fine. If you want to wipe some clear on them that's fine. Whatever is good for you that's great. We know some dealerships uh, are happy with just buffing and leaving them alone. They don't want to invest any money in headlights and that's fine. That's good for them and that works. But uh, what we want to do is take a look today at uh, headlight restoration from the perspective of the professional vendor, from the professional mobile tech, and also from the viewpoint of the dealership. What does the dealership see? Well, every other week there's somebody coming into the dealership saying that uh, I do headlights better than anybody else in the whole world. I invented everything. I've been doing it longer than everybody else. I have the special sauce and nobody can do what I do. And so, of course, with that line, you have to give them a job, don't you? And what's the end result? Crap. Looks like crap. Uh, but then again, the next week, somebody else comes by. The same thing. They've got the special sauce. They invented it. Nobody can do what they do. They're world famous. And, uh, of course, you have to give them a job. And then what happens? It's a catastrophe. It's horrible. And this goes on, on and on and on and drives the price down, down, down. Everybody's doing it for cheap. And so the professional vendor out there, the professional mobile tech, looks and says, I can't make any money doing headlights. And so they're not really excited about doing it. But then again, we get pushed into the situation where you see what somebody else has done to mess them up. And the dealership says, can you correct that? And of course, yes, we can correct it. But uh, we don't get the work all the time sometimes. And uh, what about the perspective of the dealership? When he sees vendors coming in, maybe sanding one, buffing one, uh, maybe he'll clear uh, the next one, and there's inconsistent results. The dealerships don't like that. They want consistent results. They want somebody that's got a plan and that sticks to that plan. And they know every time they give them headlights, they know exactly what it's going to look like when they get finished. So here's the situation. The vendor only has so much money that he can get from the headlights due to the fact that the everybody and their uncle is coming by claiming to do headlights and there's only so much money so then the mobile tech has to figure what is the quickest way I can do this what is the most efficient way okay the lowest cost way to get the money that we need to and for the dealership what is the most consistent results we can get all the way down the line every time and that's what we're going to do today we're going to take a look at headlights from the viewpoint of the professional mobile tech and what's best for the dealership. Are you ready to get with it? Let's go. We've got three headlights we'd like to show you. This one would be our medium difficulty. Then we have one that is difficult. And then last, we'll have one that's easy. The medium first, because this is probably your most typical repair scenario. Now we put the masking tape on first of all, primarily so that we don't scratch the paint when we're sanding. We're going to start by cleaning with steel wool. This is really an inspection step because any loose material that's uh, clouding our lens, we want to get that off of there and see what we really have to work with underneath all of this dirt. A lot of times there'll be a loose yellow oxidized layer and that'll come right off. And so what is revealed now is some hazy areas that will require sanding. 400 grit is my first go-to grit for sanding and this will take off most of the hazy areas 
in any headlight lens. So we want to give the whole lens a nice even sanding as much as possible. And this will pick up a white slurry of plastic which will wipe off. And you can see we have some areas that still could be sanded to make it more uniform. So because of that, I'm going to target those areas more specifically with the 400. I just want to get more uniformity to our base sanding here with the 400. So we're getting closer there to what we were looking for. And now we're going to move on to 600 grit. This is going a lot faster, a lot smoother now with the 600. And we want to make sure we get the uniform whiteness in the surface of the lens. As you can see, we're picking up a little bit of a slurry of, of white plastic. And that looks pretty good, so we're going to move on now to a cleaning step. We want to clean any residue off of the plastic. And for that, we're going to use just pure water. Just regular water spritzed on there and a clean towel. Make sure we don't have any residue because the very next step is going to be our spray. Now, a lot of people like to take this to finer grits. Let's say, uh, uh, 1500 to 2000 grit. Oh, by the way, we're masking here the way the wind is blowing today. I want a little extra masking. We are purposely stopping at 600 grit with our sanding so that we have a rougher surface for our clear coat to stick to. It'll really bond very well to the plastic with the 600 grit sanding scratches. That in itself saves us a lot of sanding and a lot of buffing. The first clear coat is just a very light mist coat intended as a tack coat, just to make the lens a bit sticky for the subsequent coats. Then we're coming back with a medium coat. This one is intended to cover fully, but just a medium coat. Now on a hot day, we can move right along. And so the third coat is going to be a heavy coat. We're going to move a little slower. We're going to overlap our passes a little bit more. We want this to be a coat that flows out, and it'll flow out just like glass. Now, during our prep and sanding steps, we were trying to catch all of the cleaner with our sanding paper so that this tape didn't get too wet. And that's uh, kind of a secret in not having to re-tape later. Uh, the following uh, cleanup, if we had a little bit of overspray, and you will, uh, we're using xylene here. Uh, that's not going to hurt the paint. It's going to clean it up, uh, actually shine it up a little bit too. You might have noticed if you used a cleaner wax, it contains petroleum distillates. Well, that's what xylene is. So there you go. So now let's do one with a greater level of difficulty. This has a factory clear coat. Oftentimes the uh, factory clear coat will appear yellowish and a bit hazy. In this instance, the clear coat is on the bottom half of the lens still, and it's the shinier part. I know of one vendor who spent three hours getting the clear coat off a set of factory Cadillac headlights. But he was trying to do it with 400 grit. Well, if 400 isn't working, then we need to step it up to 220. Uh, he was afraid that 220 would put uh, too deep of a sanding scratch in the lens. Uh, but here we're back to the fact that 400 isn't doing the trick. So we've got to step it up. And uh, that's what we're going to use here is 220 grit. And uh, because we're going straight with the 220, I mean, it's obvious we have the clear coat to remove. We're going to skip our usual prep step with the steel wool, and we're just going to go straight to the 220. 
Initially, we're going to hit this line and see how much sanding do we have to do. I mean, we don't really know uh, how tenacious this clear coat is at this point, so let's do a spot. Let's take a look and see how much we're cutting through it. And you can see some whiteness there, but we see the clear coat does have a little bit of a yellowish look where it still remains. So we're going to keep targeting those spots. Now you might notice that I'm not using any power tools for sanding. Uh, there's a reason for that. When you have a power sander, it's going to rest tangentially against the curvature arc of the headlight, meaning that it's only intersecting the headlight in one spot. But the foam pads for the hand sanding are in constant contact with the lens at all times. The foam pads that I'm using have a total of 11 square inches of surface area, which is in constant contact to the lens. I'm getting about 11 times the contact that you would get with a power tool. Fit in the curve of the palm of your hand, it stays in constant contact and even pressure, no matter what the contour of the lens is. You can still use a power tool, however, I just uh, prefer to do the math. Now we're having good progress. But as you can see, there are areas that are still yellowish, areas that we want to target specifically with our 220. It doesn't matter whether this is a factory clear coat or an aftermarket clear coat. In fact, if the aftermarket clear coat starts to fade or peel after a couple of years, well, this is how you would fix it. By the way, those that do exterior paint work would already have a catalyzed clear in their gun, and that would give you even more durability than the aerosol can. So as we inspect our sanding, we still see a few spots that have some yellow, especially once it dries down just a little bit, and we're going to target those yet. It's a matter of targeting those spots and then wiping to see if you've got them. You know, we don't want to do too much sanding, but we do want to get all the clear. So we do it gradually like this. If you see the little spot remaining, we're going to hit that again. And one more time, we want all the yellow to be gone. When it's all white, it's all right. So now that the clear coat is off, we're back to our regular plan, which is the 400, the 600, and the clear. So we want to get some uniformity here with the 400 grit sandpaper. Here again we have full contact with this foam pad in the palm of our hand. We follow the contour of the lens really nicely. We got this slurry of plastic. It's looking pretty good. There's one spot along the edge that's clear, and we could leave that. Uh, I'm going to hit it with 400 grit simply to make it the same whiteness as the rest of the lens, uh, just to make sure that we have some uniformity in the surface. And of course, right here, we're moving on to the 600 grit. 
Not much to do here, just trying to keep something nice and even and uniform in the final appearance. A little spritz of water and a clean towel for cleanup, getting ready for our spray coat. And notice after all that, we didn't get our tape too wet that it's not sticking, and so we can reuse it for the spray coat. A light mist coat, just for tackiness, is all we're looking for here. My masking is done with a piece of board, a little piece of plastic, Second coat is medium. So we'll get a little overspray, uh, blow by, uh, but we'll clean that up while it's still fresh. Here's the heavy coat now. We want this to be flowing out, so we want to go a little slower, a little heavier, have some more overlapping uh, going on there on that coat. Now, when we jump right onto it and peel our masking, we want to be careful. We don't want it to end up in our wet clear coat, so we want to be careful, pull it down and away, especially here where there's some water. We want to pull it down and away and be very cautious. You could let everything dry completely uh, before doing this. That's not a bad idea, but if you're impetuous uh, like me, you want to get right with it and get it off of there. We're going to take our xylene, a little bit of overspray that uh, blue by our masking. We're going to clean that up and at the same time we'll actually clean the bumper up a little better on this car. Just like brand old. Now the Range Rovers are notorious for their clear coat. It turns yellowish. It's pretty hard. It's pretty thick on there. But here again, the 220 grit takes it right off with a little diligence like we just showed, and the rest is 400, 600, clear, and we're done. This is our easy one in real time. At this dealership, the day before, a guy came in with his tent, table, power tools, and he spent an hour and a half doing two headlights, Then they were all streaked. So I came in the next day, and they asked me to do this one, and uh, they were all laughing at the guy uh, that was in there the previous day. And the cleanup guy, uh, he was laughing too, because he knew better, and so he wanted to come over here and watch me do this one. Well, unfortunately... Uh, by the time he got from one side of the yard to the other, I was already done. <laughs> so he had a few choice words for me. <laughs> by the way, I have to apologize for the pants. The only reason I keep these pants is for when I'm scooting around on the shop floor doing something like changing the transmission fluid. <laughs> and why I'm wearing them out here in public, I have no idea, but I apologize. So we start with our cleanup with the steel wool, as usual. And uh, what I'm finding here is the steel wool pretty much uh, takes care of this one. Uh, there's not really much else to do. But we talked about uh, consistent uh, results and how the dealerships expect to see a certain kind of thing. So if this lens uh, appears to be just a little bit lacking, I still want to put my clear coat on. So in order to prep for my clear coat, remember we want 600 grit sanding scratches for that to attach to. So that's all I'm doing here. I'm skipping the 400. We're going straight to the 600, giving it just an even uh, scratched up surface.
We'll clean it down with our spritz of water and, uh, and a clean side of the towel. And then we're going to be ready for the clear coat as before. A light tack coat for beginner. And on a cooler day, you can wait just a couple of minutes and then follow with your medium coat. We want full coverage on the medium coat. Not too heavy though, not too heavy. And this is our full wet coat. Cleanup guy hasn't got here yet. <laughs> so I hope you've enjoyed uh, this segment of the channel on restoring headlights. This is the real world as we see it out here at the dealerships. We're striving to keep the simple process. It's always a straightforward process. Cleaning, 400, 600, and clear. And as we saw, there will be times when uh, you have a factory clear coat, you need 220. And there might be some times when you can skip the 400 and just go straight to the 600 and the clear. Either way, it's a very straightforward system. It's quite efficient, low cost.